Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and today we're going to go over ACE inhibitors. And after you get done watching this YouTube video, don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you on this medication. So let's get started. What are ACE inhibitors? Well, to help us learn this medication, we're going to use the mnemonic NURSE, which is going to tell us the name of the drug and that tells us how this drug works on the body, what it's used for, what does it treat, our responsibilities as the nurse, side effects we can expect from this medication and education pieces we need to provide for our patient. So first let's talk about the name. The letters A stand for angiotensin converting enzyme. So what these drugs do is they inhibit this enzyme from really doing its job. So ACE plays a huge role in our RAS system, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And what this system does is the whole goal of it is to manage our blood pressure, especially when our blood pressure is low. So when the blood pressure is low, this system kicks in. What it wants to do is it wants to get angiotensin II in the body working because angiotensin II, as we learned from our shock series, is a major vasoconstrictor of our vessels. So that's going to increase our blood pressure. Plus, it triggers the release of aldosterone, which is going to help put more sodium and water into our circulation, which is going to help increase our blood volume, and this patient can get their blood pressure back up. So that is what ACE does. But if we want to throw an ACE inhibitor, it's going to cause the opposite effect. It's going to lower the blood pressure. Now, one thing you want to remember to help make things easier on you while you're studying is to remember that ACE inhibitors end with PRIL. P-R-I-L. So when you're looking at your patient's medication list, trying to figure out which one's an ACE inhibitor, or you're taking an exam, look for PRIL. And some examples of an ACE inhibitor is like Captopril, Lisinopril, Ramipril, or Benzapril. So what ACE inhibitors do is they inhibit this RAS system. And again, that stands for renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And if you can understand how this system works, it's a breeze learning ACE inhibitors because ACE inhibitors do the opposite of what this system is really supposed to do. So let's quickly talk about this system. So a patient's blood pressure drops, it's really low, and the kidney sends this and they're like, hey, we gotta do something about this low blood pressure or we're not gonna get enough blood supply and we're gonna die. So what they do is they release renin into the circulation. And when renin is present in the circulation, this causes angiotensinogen, which is a protein created and produced in the liver, to create angiotensin 1. Now remember, the goal of this whole system is to get angiotensin 2 on board because it's a major vasoconstrictor. So in order to do that, we have to have ACE present, the angiotensin converting enzyme. So whenever that is present, it's going to convert this angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. When we have angiotensin 2 present in the body, we're going to get major vasoconstriction of vessels, increasing systemic vascular resistance, increasing blood pressure, and it's going to trigger the release of aldosterone, which is going to help increase our blood volume. Now, if we throw an ACE inhibitor on, what's it going to do? It's going to prevent this ACE from doing its job. So we're not going to get the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. So we're going to lower our blood pressure. Now let's talk a little bit more about this angiotensin converting enzyme ACE and angiotensin 2 to help drive home some points so you can really understand your role as a nurse and those education pieces. There will be really no reason to memorize it because it just makes sense. Okay, so angiotensin converting enzyme, when we're not inhibiting it, what it does, as we've already established, is that it converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. We get major vasoconstriction. We increase blood pressure, systemic vascular resistance. Now, another thing that it does when we're not inhibiting it is that it inactivates a substance called bradykinin by breaking it down. Now, let's talk about bradykinin. Bradykinin is a substance that's an inflammatory substance that really helps dilate the vessels. And when we dilate vessels, we decrease like systemic vascular resistance, 
hence the blood pressure. So whenever you have the RAS system kicking in, the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system kicking in, it doesn't need dilation. So it's very important that it inactivates this substance because we don't need dilation if our blood pressure is low. But if we're throwing on an ACE inhibitor, we can benefit from this bradykinin's actions of dilation. So it will inhibit, these ACE inhibitors will inhibit this inactivation of this bradykinin, so we'll increase the amount of our bradykinin present, which is going to dilate vessels and help us decrease our blood pressure even more, which is great. But one thing I really want you to remember, because of this bradykinin, it's an inflammatory substance, some patients can have a side effect of having a persistent dry cough. And literally it drives some patients just crazy because they're just hacking and coughing all the time. And sometimes patients have to be switched to another medication because it's so bad. And I've had patients who have had this. So this does happen with ACE inhibitors. So remember, bradykinin can lead to that persistent, annoying, dry cough. Now let's talk a little bit more about this angiotensin too. Well, we've already established it's a major vasoconstrictor. So when we constrict our vessels, what does that do? It increases systemic vascular resistance and our blood pressure. Now another thing angiotensin II does when it's in the system is it's going to trigger the release of this aldosterone. And the aldosterone influences the kidneys to keep sodium and water. And the whole reason for that is it's gonna really help increase our blood volume, which will help increase our pressure even more. Now, while it's keeping the sodium and the water, the kidneys are going to be excreting potassium. So if we throw an ACE inhibitor on, we're gonna prevent, remember angiotensin one turning into angiotensin two. So that right here is not going to happen. So our ACE comes, it X's it out. So what's the effects gonna be whenever we give our patient an ACE inhibitor? Well, we don't have the conversion of angiotensin one to angiotensin two, so our blood pressure and systemic vascular resistance will drop. What is gonna happen with this sodium and water? Well, instead of keeping it like how we did over here, we're going to excrete the sodium and water, which is going to provide like a diuretic effect for our patient. Now this is good for patients, for instance, who are in fluid overload due to heart failure. So here in a moment, we're gonna get in what this drug is really used for. And potassium, over here, we were excreting it. Well, with ACE inhibitors, because how it's working on the kidneys, you can actually keep too much potassium. So with many patients, you have to watch their potassium levels because they're at risk for hyperkalemia. So remember that, ACE inhibitors, hyperkalemia. So nursing considerations, we'll have to be looking at those potassium levels and educating our patients on what foods to watch out for so that we don't increase those levels. Now let's talk about what ACE inhibitors are use for? Well, we've established that ACE inhibitors help lower the blood pressure because we're preventing that angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So it's great for people who have hypertension. It will lower their blood pressure. Another thing it's used to treat is heart failure, specifically systolic dysfunction. And this is where that left ventricle can't really empty or pump blood forward out of it through the aorta into the body. So instead that blood can back up, go into the lungs and lead to heart failure, fluid overload. So our ACE inhibitors, what they can do is they can help decrease afterload. And remember afterload, and we're talking about the left ventricle, is where is the pressure that the ventricle must overcome in order to get that semilunar valve open so blood can leave it. So if we decrease that resistance, that pressure that that ventricle must overcome, hence the systemic vascular resistance, it'll make it a lot easier for that ventricle to pump blood forward. In addition, ACE inhibitors are gonna help decrease our preload. And preload is the amount that that ventricle has stretched at the end of its filling phase with blood, so at the end of diastole. Another thing that ACE inhibitors will help treat is a patient who has suffered a myocardial infarction an MI, so when they're post-MI, and what ACE inhibitors will do because it alters a lot of this 
um, after load and preload, it will help limit the effects of damage that can happen to the heart once a patient has had a myocardial infarction. Now let's talk about the responsibilities of the nurse. Okay, whenever a patient is on an ACE inhibitor, what are you gonna do? Well, of course, you're going to monitor their blood pressure and their pulse routinely. You wanna look at that, see where they're running with their blood pressure because with ACE inhibitors, there's a risk of hypo tension where that systolic is less than 90 and that increases even more if your patient's on diuretics where they're urinating a lot they're losing a lot of their fluid volume and that can decrease pressure or if they're on other blood pressure medicines because a lot of cardiac patients are going to be on a variety of medications so you definitely want to watch their blood pressure in addition you want to monitor some things like their potassium level make sure that they're not experiencing hyperkalemia and we talked about the reason for that, a normal potassium is 3.5 to 5. So you want them within that range. And if they if you get an EKG or they're on bedside monitoring, you can look at their EKG and one sign and symptom of hyperkalemia with their EKG is that they have tall peaked T waves. Also, you want to be looking at their renal function, so their BUN and creatinine, because remember, this drug can alter how our kidneys work. We're messing with the sodium and the water and the potassium. So making sure that they're within range, a normal BUN is about 5 to 20, a normal creatinine is 0.6 to 1.2. And of course, looking at how they're urinating. What is their um, urinary output? We want it in an adult at least 30 cc's per hour. Another thing to remember with ACE inhibitors is that you want to watch out for a condition called angioedema. This is where there is swelling of the dermis and the sub -Q tissue. So we have really deep swelling. It's not superficial swelling like eutocaria. This is deep down in there and that can be life threatening. So how your patient will present with this is that they can get swelling on their face, their mouth, their extremities, and it can affect the airway where they're gonna have difficulty breathing. So you wanna educate your patient about that. What are the signs and symptoms of it? It's rare, but it can happen to any patient. It's most common they have found in African-American patients. And if it happens, it's dangerous and they need medical treatment immediately. And lastly, with our responsibilities, you wanna look at how your patient is really tolerating this medication. Because I mentioned that persistent dry cough. It will literally drive some people crazy because they're constantly just hacking and coughing. But because this medication is prescribed with people who also have heart failure, as a nurse, you want to look and make sure, is this the persistent dry cough associated with this medication or is this heart failure exacerbation where they're going into fluid overload? So you'd want to determine the two and how you would look at that is you would listen to the lung sounds. What does their lung sound like? Are they wet where they, you can hear crackles? Are they having difficulty breathing on exertion, just getting up from the chair to the bed? They're really winded, they can't breathe, and um, they're having swelling in their extremities where they're retaining fluid. So make sure you look at that and assess that and just don't write it off that it's that dry hacking cough that you get with ACE inhibitors because it could be that they are in heart failure exacerbation. Now let's talk about the side effects of ACE inhibitors. Well, this medication can cause that persistent dry hacking cough, and that was related to that bradykinin. And this is usually harmless, so if your patient has that, let them know that. Another thing is that it can cause dizziness because we're changing, dealing with the blood pressure. So tell the patient to change positions slowly when they get up because they can become dizzy and they might fall. It can also cause hypotension because it can lower the blood pressure too much. It can increase potassium levels, that hyperkalemia, and it can cause angioedema, that dangerous swelling of the deep tissues. And if they experience that, they need medical treatment fast. Now let's wrap up this lecture and let's talk about the education pieces for the patient. So since your patient is taking an ACE inhibitor, which alters blood pressure, it's really important you educate your patient to check their blood pressure and pulse regularly and to record it and to bring those recordings to their follow-up visits so the physician can see if this medication is doing what it's supposed to do. Also, you wanna educate your patient to avoid salt substitutes with potassium and consuming foods that are rich in potassium, like potatoes, bananas, pork, oranges, tomatoes, 
spinach avocados because we can increase the potassium level even more because remember ACE inhibitors how they work on the kidneys they will cause the kidneys to keep potassium now this education piece is really important if the patient is also taking other types of medications that keep potassium like those potassium sparing diuretics like spironolactalone so the patients at double risk for high potassium level so really drive that point home to them Another thing is if they do have that dry cough and can't tolerate it, some patients can tolerate it and it's just fine, but a lot of patients when they do get it, they can't tolerate it. They need to speak with their physician about it instead of just stopping taking the medication because some patients are like, it was driving me crazy, I just quit taking it. You don't wanna quit taking an ACE inhibitor because it can lead to a condition called rebound hypertension. And this is where the blood pressure is rebounding and it's just like super high and it's really hard to treat and bring it down. Also, teach your patient the signs and symptoms associated with the angioedema can really occur at any, any time. So let them know what may happen and what they should do. And miss dose, because we don't want our patient to just abruptly quit taking this, we want them to take it whenever they need to, how it's scheduled, and even if they feel unwell, they need to take the medication because of the rebound hypertension. So if they miss a dose, um, and they remember that same day that they're supposed to take it, they can go ahead and take the dose. But let's say they didn't remember until the next day. Well, they would skip that dose that they missed, but take that scheduled dose that is due that day. They would never want to double doses because that could lead to severe hypotension. Okay, so that wraps up this lecture over ACE inhibitors. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take the free quiz and to subscribe to our channel for more videos.